If you're a fan of Yellowstone's volcanic history, you've probably seen a simple ashfall map that highlights how, during its largest eruptions, ash was distributed and largely preserved across the United States. However, you may not know how these maps are created or how volcanologists use this data to determine the height of the eruptive plume produced during caldera-forming eruptions. First, what is an ash plume? In volcanic systems, it's a mixture of gas, ash, rock, and crystals that is released from an eruptive vent at speeds approaching or exceeding the speed of sound. 343 meters per second or 767 miles per hour. For smaller columns, the wind controls the path of the ash column resulting in ash falling in a zone extending downwind of the volcano. However, as an eruption increases in size, the height of the column often increases as well, allowing the column to spread out like an umbrella and deposit ash over a wider area. A recent example of a powerful umbrella-like column is NASA, which believes drilling up to 6 miles 10 kilometers, into the supervolcano beneath Yellowstone National Park to pump high-pressure water could cool it. Although explosive caldera-forming eruptions are among the most violent natural events on Earth, they are not common. As such, the tools available to determine the height of ash columns from past eruptions rely on measuring the thickness of the ashfall deposit and the size of its particles. Essentially, if the column is larger, it will leave thicker deposits farther away from the source vent, with pumice, broken off magma, and lithics rock torn away from the vent, gradually becoming smaller with distance. If there are distinct layers in the ash deposit, this technique can even be used to see whether the height of the column has changed over time. For example, scientists can see that a major eruption about 3,600 years ago from Santorini Volcano, Greece, started with a column about 10 kilometers, 6 miles, tall that grew to 30 kilometers, 19 miles tall. For reference, the cruising altitude of most airplanes is 9 to 12 km, 30,000 to 40,000 if. This is why calculating the height of the column from previous eruptions is important for understanding the potential impact of future eruptions on aviation. For a volcanic eruption as large as the largest caldera-forming event at Yellowstone, the column likely reached the top of the stratosphere, which is 50 kilometers, 31 miles above the Earth's surface. Yellowstone eruptions, based on their chemistry and measuring characteristics such as thickness, these maps are critical to understanding the plume characteristics of Yellowstone's major explosive eruptions. If you live in one of the many states covered by these deposits, you can visit these locations by searching for them on a map created by Wilcox and Izet, which includes coordinates and field descriptions. A team of geologists from Montana State University and Victoria University of Wellington, New Zealand, recently visited one such site near Shell, Wyoming. At this site, Two ashfall deposits associated with two ash flow units determined to be from the Lava Creek Tuff, which resulted from the formation of the Yellowstone Caldera about 631,000 years ago, have been reported. However, the geologists also found something else. Not only does this basin, located in the Bighorn Mountains, contain the deposits in question, but beneath the Lava Creek Tuff deposits and therefore older in age are two additional ash deposits not shown on the Wilcox and Isaac maps. What are some possible sources of thick additional ash in the middle of Wyoming? Could they be the ashfall deposits from the Mesa Falls Tuff, 1.3 million years old Huckleberry Ridge Tuff, 2.1 million years old, also from Yellowstone? Or could it even be ash from farther away, for instance, the Bishop Tuff eruption which formed Long Valley Caldera, California, about 767,000 years ago? The presence of crystals of the mineral biotite in the one of the mystery deposits points toward the Bishop Ash as a likely suspect, as this mineral is not associated with any of Yellowstone's major eruptions. But what about the older ash? To settle the debate, geologists sent samples of the mineral. The results will give the ages of the eruptions that fuel these ash deposits, thus telling geologists the likely sources. We know you have the answer, but we'll report back once the results are in.